In June 1941, Adolf Hitler expressed a deep disdain for Switzerland and its political system, describing it as disgusting and miserable, and branded the Swiss as moral enemies of the new Germany. These statements were made during a meeting with his main ally, Benito Mussolini. At that time, Europe was in a critical situation. A year earlier, France had been defeated in numerous European countries such as Poland, Norway, Denmark, Luxembourg, Belgium, and the Netherlands were already under the control of the Third Reich. Additionally, Italy, Hungary, Romania, and Spain were aligned as allies or puppet states of Nazi Germany, creating a context in which Switzerland stood out for its neutrality and resistance to aligning with Hitler's regime. Despite being surrounded by territories controlled by the Axis powers during World War II, Switzerland, a small country in the heart of Europe, managed to maintain its neutrality and avoid invasion. Adolf Hitler, who had aspirations to conquer Switzerland, repeatedly expressed his desire to dominate the country and his generals even devised a specific plan to take over the Swiss Alps. However, Switzerland remained free and out of Nazi control throughout the war. The reason Germany never invaded Switzerland can be attributed to a combination of military, political, and economic factors. Militarily, Switzerland was well prepared for defense, with a policy of widespread militarization and extensive fortifications along the Alps, making any invasion attempt potentially costly and difficult. Politically and economically, Switzerland offered advantages as a financial center where even Axis actors could conduct international transactions, as well as serving as a useful diplomatic intermediary. Switzerland's neutrality in World War II is a testament to its strategic military preparation and skillful diplomacy, allowing it to survive intact in a continent devastated by war. Switzerland, with its linguistic and cultural diversity and four official languages, Romanche, Italian, French, and German, has historically been a target for conquerors, including Adolf Hitler and Benito Mussolini during World War II. Both leaders expressed interests in annexing parts of Switzerland that spoke their respective languages. Hitler despised the Swiss, even questioning the legitimacy of their state. Despite these threats, Switzerland was never invaded by Germany or Italy, thanks to its military preparedness, its economic and diplomatic usefulness to the Axis countries, and its complex mountainous geography. These factors made Switzerland a special case of neutrality and survival on a continent in conflict. Although before the outbreak of the conflict Hitler had promised to respect Swiss neutrality, on June 25, 1940, the same day that France fell into Nazi hands, Germany began planning Operation Cannonbound to invade the neighboring country. This operation involved attacking Switzerland along with Italy with up to half a million soldiers, of course, only after a series of Luftwaffe bombings, a usual strategy of the Third Reich, even Himmler had several conversations discussing different candidates to take over the Swiss territory once it was successfully occupied. However, the plans for this invasion never materialized because, well, many historians and specialists indicate that Switzerland might not be as easy to conquer as some other European countries. The Helvetic rulers, anticipating the outbreak of war, had significantly increased the military budget during the 1930s. This resulted in the development of some excellent weapons such as the K-31 rifle, which was considered superior to the German Car 98K, and the French Marine Salnier MS.406 combat plane, which was manufactured under contract. At the same time, the vast majority of Swiss men had military training, so they were ready to defend their country and had top-notch weapons to do so. Even the general in charge of the Swiss armed forces during World War II, Henri Guisson, raised the age of conscripts to 60 years and had a concrete plan to defend his country from a possible invasion. Knowing that, despite its large number of soldiers and good weapons, Switzerland was not a real match for the powerful Wehrmacht forces, Geisen's strategy was to leave Germany the cities and flat territories and mobilize his army towards the Alps. This territory was considered a fortress, as it would have been extremely difficult for the Axis to use their tanks and air support there. At the same time, this would allow Swiss soldiers to apply guerrilla tactics taking advantage of their knowledge of the area. This meant a defense of almost a million well-trained, armed men in complex terrain for the invaders. Even if the conquest succeeded, the possibility of resistance movements in the Alps would have forced Germany to maintain a significant number of troops there. According to many, this is the main reason why Hitler never launched Operation Tannenbaum, 
as Switzerland did not have such high strategic value as to justify that mobilization of resources. At the same time, as the war progressed, the priorities of the Axis shifted to other issues, especially their struggles against Great Britain and the Soviet Union. However, other specialists and historians indicate that this was not the real reason behind the non-invasion. Napoleon had managed to defeat in the Alps and conquer Switzerland, so why wouldn't Hitler, who at that time was basically unstoppable and had succeeded under similar conditions in the Yugoslav Balkans and Greece? But before we continue, we want to invite you. If you are watching this video, it means that you are passionate about the military world, so we recommend that you visit our new channel, American Armament, where deep analyses of the most powerful, modern, and surprising military weaponry of the American power will be conducted. We leave you the link to this extraordinary channel in the cards above and in the first comment. Returning to our topic, many authors maintain that Nazi Germany did not attack the Swiss country simply because its neutrality was convenient, and many even considered it an ally of the Wehrmacht. The Swiss sociologist and political scientist Jean Ziegler succinctly summed up this point of view. Hitler was crazy, but not crazy enough to attack his own banker. It is that during the war, the Third Reich sent and kept a large amount of gold and money in Swiss banks, so attacking this country would have been economically risky. At the same time, the German gold laundering provided great shelter to the Nazi generals and officers in case they lost the war, as eventually happened. In addition, Swiss companies produced armaments for the German forces. Although they were neutral and independent, the Swiss provided weapons and military technology to the Axis ten times more than to the Allies. In the same way, Switzerland was a perfect place for political meetings and conversations between both sides that, although not officially recognized, occurred more often than people think. In conclusion, there was no practical utility in invading Switzerland, as its neutrality favored Hitler. Operation Tannenbaum could be extremely counterproductive if the conquest became complicated and required more resources, even though the operation went as planned by the Third Reich. Maybe the invasion would still have negative consequences in political and economic terms, so it was not worth it in any way. Eventually, all plans to invade Switzerland completely vanished in 1943, after the fall of fascist Italy. Today, the role of the Swiss government in the war continues to be studied and questioned largely because of its close relations with Nazism. Although it managed to maintain its independence and neutrality throughout the conflict, Things could have been very different and negative for Switzerland if Germany won the war, as an invasion would have come sooner or later. As a well-known song sung by the Wehrmacht goes, Switzerland is a porcupine that we take for dessert, then we will go for the whole world and bring us Roosevelt. In the conclusion of our video, we reflect on the potential impact of a German invasion of Switzerland during World War II. Considering Switzerland's strategic position and neutrality, this action could have had significant implications in logistical and diplomatic terms for Hitler. We invite you to share your opinion on how this hypothetical event could have affected the outcome of the war. Leave us your comments and subscribe for more historical analyses. Thank you for following us to the end. If you are new to our channel, subscribe and follow our social networks in the description. Remember, the people who do not know their history are doomed to repeat it.